Hello, survivors of the nuclear apocalypse. Atom Cadets. Welcome back to Atom RPG and playing hardball. So we are in bunker 301, uh, 317. Sorry for the uh, mix up in my brain. Um, we fiddled around, we looted the place, and we found this beautiful robot. There's a robot face here. Well, and in theory, we can probably repair it at some point, who knows, but we can't, even if we push our skill to 100, we found out that it will give us a lot of experience, but probably not enough to justify to destroy it just yet. So, let's see. Let's go further into the bunker. There's nothing else up here. Oh, there are more. More mimix. And I wonder. Well, like this one here. So there is another elevator. But maybe this one here. So it's all. Oh, yeah. We can actually look into it. Or someone just came out of it, probably, at some point. Well, we are surely not short on Aunt Saliva, Salivary Glands. Unsorb or something? Mische Photo or something? So like an emergency telephone. Oh, we could, we could actually... Yeah, sorry. We could take a shower here and then probably get rid of our radiation problem, huh? Moonshine. More anti-radiation drug. That's actually a good thing. But we are not so radiated at the moment. Come on, we, we do have the lockpicks here. There you go. Oh, a lot of... Oh, really, a lot of zip gun rounds. Now that's great. However, we would ask ourselves why would any Soviet soldier have that one in there that is just purely improvised, right? Oh. Oh, there is an, another massive. Another massive hole. And something, yeah, so that, like, it's again bent in so some something crawled in more microchips they are super heavy oh there's something or more endurance so we are not uh, okay good we we didn't get poisoned there they have so many microchips. Let's let's keep them there. Three rusty empty tins. Salt. More stuff like that. Yeah. So actually, I think that, like this place has already been looted. A lot of toilet paper. I think we will be the king of toilet paper. Okay, so that's fine. And by the way, I fiddled around, I have to admit, uh, I fiddled around off camera a little bit and I just tried out something and I kicked the robot uh, until I died and that is actually, uh, you know, like an information for the walkthrough now. You get an achievement there. And that's it. Yeah, so not, not, it's not like the robot is suddenly, uh, you know, like that there was a sh short circuit or something, that the robot is maybe uh, starting to talk or something. But uh, I think it, it is not that sophisticated a piece of machinery anyway. Um, well, and then you just get, get a Steam achievement.
Oh, it says my precious condom. So I guess uh, we are uh, again more upside down. So like this. So this is north. Oh, there's red there. Yeah, so this seems to be the medical area. Oh, and this is a training area. Very nice. For martial arts. Oh, and there is someone just waiting for us behind the door. There. Oh. We barely dodged. Mutated rodent. We still like to eat its flesh. Yeah, let's look around. Okay, well, I mean, if we want to, if we want to uh, start a gym, then we find equipment for it here. There's another one. Yeah, just let it come. Easy. No reason to waste any ammo on it. And then we do have something here. Tech. We see a soft drink vending machine. Aha. Once such machines stood in all Soviet towns and cities. After the, the war, most of them were used up for parts of scrap metal. A glass. Try to get a drink. Oh. Place the glass under the tap and push a random button, nothing happens. Let's leave. Remember this point in time. Hit the machine with our fist. We knock on the machine several times, it starts humming and suddenly spits out some smelly brown substance into our glass. It's probably stale water, probably. Bottoms up. Yeah, let's drink it. We look at the murky liquid in the glass, exhale and chug it in a single gulp. Nausea sets in momentarily as we remember the foolishness of drinking from strange unsafe sources. We get one experience point though. But we lose three health. Yeah, that is... I think we got rather lucky there probably. So poison 75, interesting. And then, what does it say? What does it say? Oh yeah, when we got poisoned, huh? Yeah, so and we were obviously not doing that. But let's uh, let's hit the machine, pull the liquid out, and walk away. So there we go. So now, I'm uh, sorry. And now we are well. We don't even need to invest anything here. Cause we can just use our toolbox. Where is it? Uh, jack the machine open take out the bolts we pull out the bolts and open the vending machine okay and well there are some wires okay well but that's uh, that's the best use for it anyway and actually I think it's probably wiser to keep a weapon at hand So, like this. Went oh, by the way. Let's firstly check out these lockers. Oh, some scrap that is very welcome. Lock picking this one here. Oh, there's movement on the other side. Oh, 100 rubles, some duct tape and soap. Oh, ants, giant ants that are alive. Let's go in here. Can we actually do something here now? Oh, there are more lockers. Hello, rat. Oh. Try to bite us. There you go. On the head.
Oh, the shower. There is actually... Well, okay, well, maybe it's it's also rather unsafe, you know, to go uh, to expose your skin to the water that's coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, maybe we... This one here. Yeah, come on. That was a hard one, and nothing is in there. That is frustrating, huh? There you go. Toilet paper, well. On our way to become the toilet paper king of the wastelands. Or rather, the king of the toilet paper. The mountain of toilet paper. Another rusty Nagant pistol. I wonder why the other one, like the two that we had, why one of them was actually cheaper than the other. Spoon, not a silver one. Bottle and corned meat, that's actually good. To have more meat. Okay, well. So maybe we should actually, yeah, we should go for it uh, in a more systematic, uh, systematic way. Let's go up here. Rats. We killed this one, right? Yeah. Oh, there. Oh no, it wasn't a rat. Oh, it is a rat, but they seem to, they don't seem to care. Oh. Ah, well. Oh no, and now Fidel is going to run forward, huh? I hope he's not that stupid, but I think he is. So he will just stand in here and block us. So I guess we need to go here. And hope that we will dodge the rat. Oh no. Oh, and now, well, we will... Now we will know what actually happens. Uh, let's make one aimed attack into the eyes. It dodged again. Oh, there's another one. Did it come out of here? Let's make an aimed attack. 62% for the eyes. Hmm. Seems to be way, way more problematic. Are we, are we poison or something? Oh yeah, we are. The rat, the rat bit us and now we are poisoned. Okay. That's good to know. Waste paper. So I imagine the books uh, in there, they are just rotten. Oh, a rotten toadstool. Mushroom is rotten, it crumbles at the slightest touch. It would be unadvisable to eat it even more so than a fresh toadstool. Okay. Med area. Painkillers, mm -hmm. they are super expensive. Another stimulant, oh, and seed corn. A battlefield stimulant. Oh, that's after the battle, it will just mess us up. And can make us really dumb in the long term for 48 hours. Wow. Okay. So I guess we should only take this one if we are really desperate and if it's a hard fight that we can't get around. 
and if we can actually take a little vacation afterwards. Ah, this one here, this is the antidote. Okay, well actually we have some of them already, right? But of course we will we will be the true wasteland and we are not wasting anything. And firstly we are we are building up the toxin in our body. So it's actually worthwhile to drink some more water and then we are using up all our water first. Before we go and uh, use the antidote. So here there is something. Someone didn't clean up the operation table, but otherwise there doesn't seem to be anything here. Someone smashed in the wall. Yeah, well, so here we are. This is north again. Doesn't look like we can go in here, but this is like only pipe. Is this from the mod? Uniform Atom, light vest short. If we are lucky, we might get, although I don't think so, but we might get now, we are not getting 4,000 or like now like 3,300 experience points in here, right? But it might add up. Ah, let's rip out all the cables. would put a battle stimulant in there. But I guess we are only taking out the cables that uh, we know that uh, that we don't that the machinery doesn't need for the basic function, right? Because like if there if the elect if the electricity would uh, fail That would of course be a bad thing. Yeah. As I thought. Oh, there's an ant. Oh, it didn't hit us. It didn't go beyond uh, our... Oh, I wanna... So let's try it again. Eyes. Oh wow, 52 cri uh, crit. Now oh, that is something. There's another aunt. Smash. There. And there's another one. Well, let's walk here first. Fidel. It's not the quickest guy. Actually, I think we should rather wait for it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, this seems to be... This seems to be a better aunt. Or do we have some form of effect on us? Can I look here? just that we are poisoned. Ah. The head. Well, actually, we might make the, the next level here. If there are enough little critters around and other stuff. We might made it, make it, and then, then we can actually read the book. So that would probably be a good thing, but I think we are not going to rip out uh, all the stuff. Oh, 
Oh. Well, I guess the, the red, the mutated rodent uh, saw something with Fidel. There you go. There was a nasty surprise, right? Oh yeah, there is. Well, there there is a, a lot of uh, microchip stuff going on here. Ah. Nah. Coffee and armor piercing rounds. Now that's just great. Yeah, the people who were sitting here, like apparently one person was operated all of it or what? Can we see something? It looks like it's uh, like this is the, uh, the observation center or something, security. These are the toilets. Toilet paper. We especially we especially like to use toilet paper that has been on the ground for ages uh, in a public toilet, right? And then we use that same toilet paper to uh, to make a cigarette or something and smoke it, right? That is very hygienic. Oh, yeah. Let's get up there. So we are finished here. Oh yeah. Okay. There's someone. Mr. Ant-Man. There we go. Ay ay ay. this is for but I guess this is like uh, another this is like also oh, a magnet band based computer or something but this looks actually more like another uh, security post but this looks like the private area where people lived yeah there are beds there okay Where how much lock picking do we have? 50 with the, the lock picks. Yeah, I mean it's enough. We just need to fiddle around a while. The personal spoon and fork of of someone or someone's personal stuff. Yeah, we look so defenseless with the lock picks in hand, right? Aiming. What happens if we hit the legs? Nothing. Punching it regularly. Let's not take any risks there. But I think I'm always starting uh, the the battle uh, with with an aimed shot, uh, with an aimed uh, hit. Now, just try it out. Forks are very important here, or oh, some gasoline in a plastic bottle, whatever the person who did that needed that one for. Oh, there's another rat in there, and there is someone, so the rat has been feeding on the corpse. There you go. Good, we dodged. Aiming, what happens if we hit the legs? Oh, it's stunned. But the stun is like a normal effect. There you go. And actually there are two corpses here. Nothing. One ruble and a fork. So it looks like these people all had their personal cutlery uh, in, in this uh, place. Soap and a condom. 
Well, there is a double bed, right? Or not a real double bed. Etagere. More painkillers, so the people are certainly into drugs and other stuff. So well, maybe these guys here. Uh, this year was the they, they were not scientists or something but they were the security detail or something rather not inhale this stuff too much oh someone was hiding behind the corner sit the legs again doesn't seem to make any special impact Yeah, so I guess the the ants uh, are actually responsible. Oh. I guess that must be a crazy person. So maybe we are actually we are going Firstly, to other parts of the bunker. It is a quick one, though. So the legs. Stunned. Well, maybe it increases the stun chance or something. Are there more? Eight points. Well, oh yeah, it's uh, stunned again. Okay, well then, then let's make an armed one. In the head, critical. Yeah, sure. Ending the turn. Oh, there's one behind us. Okay. Here. Oh, we are we are poisoned. Are we more poisoned now? Put it in the head. Hmm. I think we probably just got unlucky there. Yeah, sorry. No, it's still 100 when we get hungry here. Well, let's take everything, skin the rodent with our sharpened knife. Actually, this should be a good thing because we can make a nice fillet, right? Empty bottle, uh, like so, some more, finally. A cassette, a reddish one. We we do we know reddish ones? Like we know the yellow ones, right? Yeah, I mean I think there are three different ones: green, yellow, and red. More armor piercing rounds. That's a good thing. More toilet paper. That's even better. And even more toilet paper, so the people have their personal spoons and forks and a lot of toilet paper. But I do understand, uh, you know, the worry about not having enough toilet paper. Oh, and another magnifying glass. Armor piercing rounds, more soap. And even another magnifying glass. Okay, that's good.
Oh, milk. Oh, that's great. Minus a, a 100 radiation. Cows in the waste give less and less milk each year, which is sad because everyone enjoys a glass of milk once in a while, right? Oh yeah, that's actually excellent. And then we can actually do something against our hunger as well. So where is it there? Let's directly drink it. And then in a minute or so, we, we are also losing uh, another 20 radiation. Once our system has uh, digested it, right? Could drink another bottle of cognac after it, but let's rather not. This cognac was made back in the good old USSR, not for internal use. Internal use, huh? Gasoline in a plastic bottle. Yeah. An empty canteen, some rubles, tea and more wires. And now we are encumbered. Okay. I wonder if we will find a clean water source in the, in here. Let's give the gasoline to Fidel. rope the tins now we are really out of tin uh, uh, full overflowing with tins oh yeah he's got like more than 30 kilograms to carry around why are we actually carrying everything while well, he doesn't do anything Peter can make himself some uh, useful right yeah, let's give him the knives All the meat, 16 wires, now that's great. And I think then we are ra relatively good. Three condoms, that's good. Three times, no worries. But otherwise I think we can just keep everything else. There you go. So that's okay for now. Very nice. That is very nice indeed. More of the personal stuff. Uh, these guys don't even have mattresses here. Oh, 10 metal bolts. Very nice. Although at some point, yeah, we might want to upgrade our uh, crossbow again, huh? And ah, by the way, I thought about our, uh, our feverish dream um, with with meeting the uh, the caravan and then uh, these looters in the basement that killed us and uh, I think a good strategy could have or like a good tactic could have been um, to shoot shoot one in the head like the one with the, the melee person the melee uh, girl uh, shoot her in the head I think she didn't have any head uh, protection um, because she was the one that actually hit us in the beginning. Um, and then uh, Fidel might have had a better shot. Oh! Oh, another training grenade. But this here. Oh! Explosive with a makeshift timer. Now that is something. That is something. Yeah. So I think we, we quite had the chance. But I mean, we are. I think we are certainly not at the point where we could and should use a machine gun, like the thing the guy had, uh, simply because we don't have the ammunition. 
Oh, again. I didn't see it. I think it's just, uh, it's probably like hiding in the door frame or something. Let's sit then the arms. Oh, it's, we missed. Wasn't it 99%? Oh no. Come on, Fidel. Yeah, very good. All right. Starting to sweat there a little bit. We are coughing. Why is the is 100 considered bad? It's like 10%. So, but the good news is we are not radiated at all anymore. The milk really helped. Rubber bullets. I mean, we are just collecting everything. Who knows? It might come handy at some point, or maybe we need to uh, train someone. 30 rounds, but I actually I don't see us shooting the uh, the rusty Nagan pistol at all. Oh, that's a nice uh, workshop here or something. They don't didn't leave much stuff here though. Okay, well, we're just the poor scavenger who even takes the spoon with him. Oh, come on. There's nothing here. Come on. What's going on? Why are we so unlucky? Because we are unlucky, huh? But we are the hoarder. Well then. So, nothing there. Oh, we, we made our way around. So then there's just here. So let's have a look at the map. Ah oh yeah, so it's like in the southwestern corner. And that was the door that, like the one with the coat. This looks like, but it wasn't accessible. Okay, well then let's go here to the east first. There you go. Let's have one punch in the legs again. 99. Hmm. Well, yeah, we are we are making a lot of experience points steadily. Lots of books. They will love books, right? The memo, we, 5534, Petrov and Neumann, 8904. Ah, I guess this is like for the personal rooms. Okay. I think I just, I just write it down. Um, so what do we have? Uh, we we probably don't need the 5534 because that's this room here. Then we've got 8904. We have 7037 
Oh, a personal diary of Lazarenko KG. Okay. Oh, and there are white cassettes as well. The production of compact, ca compact cassettes in the USSR began in the early 1960s in Tallinn. Thirty pages. Oh my god. Okay, well that will t take some time. I acknowledge my mistakes and I am ready to receive the proper punishment for them. But Aksenov's position on this matter disturbs me greatly. Need I even say that they are all unhappy with my statement? The talk was really hard and the ending of it very awkward. But now this topic is finally closed. So it was all for the best. Few words about my future home. They sure didn't spare any expenses. Automatic doors, each equipped with motion sensing apparatus. You can even input a code to use instead of a key. It seems like an overpriced, unnecessary thing. But I think someday doors like this will be everywhere, even in shops. Krasnov got a strange phobia because of these doors, though he is afraid that's, that after some error these doors will endanger people around the bunker. The tech staff proved there is no danger involved, but he still believes that sooner or later one of these doors will cut his head off. Strange superstition from a rational man. Well, I personally would rather worry about the doors not opening anymore when you are inside, but well. The lab, oh, what's happening? Hmm. And that stunned. So I could imagine that there's a higher stun chance Oh, the poor aunt. I oh, yeah, well. Fidel, you have the honors? There you go. Yeah. So, where were we? What did I want to say? Uh, that uh, that I would rather worry about the doors not opening again and then being jammed or something. So the lab is equipped like something out of this world. All the instruments are in ideal condition. The machines lag markings, but I believe they are East German. There is a room for test animals. I believe we will have to experiment on them during our stay. Well, I believe within the Soviet Union, like East Germany, was more like uh, known for the quality products and the high-tech stuff, right? But well, and but they were also like not com competitive, like basically nothing they they produced was competitive with the products of the West. Although Zeiss, I think Zeiss uh, made good good optics. Yeah, but well, so there is a room for test animals. I believe we will have to experiment on them during our stay. Vivisection comes to mind. We also have some Elecon computers, EVMs and even Western designs, an amazing level of equipment. I think these machines surpass everything I used before. So, ah, and then, so there was 2X 1982. So I guess October 1982, and then we have here November 82. The nature of our research is not known to most of us. The full picture is probably only known to our leader, Nina Semyonova. Semyonovna. She's pulling all the strings. As for me, I suspect we are working on a kind of a bio biological weapon. Most of us think that nuclear weapons are the most destructive. How wrong they are. The most dangerous weapon is indeed biological. Yeah, because it's not controllable. December 82. I started ordering the Pravda newspaper to keep up with the time. So many things happened during my stay in the bunker. I am also considering a subscription to the Literature Digest and the New, New World Journal. A good read never hurts. December, uh, uh, February uh, 83. Today I got the chance to get to know our leader, Ni Nina Semyonovna. 
At supper she asked what I think about poetry. I was really surprised by this because I always thought of her as someone too practical for such matters. Without even thinking, I lied, saying that I love poetry. She recommended reading Block. What an interesting person she is. Her green eyes sometimes light up with no apparent reason, with no connections to the topic of the discussion. But these eyes, they do not live on their own. They follow Nina Semyonova's feelings and thoughts. What does she think about, I wonder? Just about work? April 83. Got a bit sick today. I blamed the trip to the local site called the Zagum Zagoremsk waterfall. Quite the place, actually. The water in it has a reddish tint, almost like blood. Some microorganisms are probably to blame. Strange nobody ever tried to learn more about that phenomena. Local legend tells us of a fight between two strongmen. Big Norma and Anzao are the brave. They fought on the Zagorem hill until they ran one another through with swords. I can only imagine how surprised the people of the past were to find this bloody waterfall. Anyway, I am writing this from the Med Bay. I have to spend a few days here. How good it is that I started subscriptions to newspapers. July 83, change in staff today. The new specialist is Neyman YG, who will be replacing the departed Nikolaev. Today we and Neyman discuss what is more important, the physical body functions or emotions. I think that the body is more important. Emotions are a product of it. But Neyman thinks otherwise. He loves music and is fairly creative. Sort of a mix between a scientist and a poet. Interestingly enough, judging by my observations, Neyman himself isn't prone to empathy. September 83, it seems that we are not the only lab that is currently busy with the project. There is at least one more. Uh-huh, interesting, like parallel research. Although where it is located and who is part of the team there, I do not know. Interesting information though. Are we working on parts of some giant project? Are we making the same thing but with different approaches? Maybe we have the same work plan and the other labs are spares in case something goes wrong in one? Too many questions. Sadly, I doubt I will ever find answers for them. Yeah, this would be like top secret, like top top, cosmic top secret, right? Then we have March 84. Today, me and Krasnov finished a chess session that lasts two days. Each afternoon we met in the rest area to continue our play. The others watched us with interest. I must say Krasnov is a great chess player, but sometimes he is prone to risky moves. Thus, he has a more adventurous play style. I, on the other hand, believe that the best style of play is that of a tactician. Each move is a riddle, a puzzle, which must be solved. This is why I love chess. Krasnov lost, by the way, but I must say it was quite the battle. Now I won't play chess for a while. I like, make, uh, I like making pauses between games. Krasnov wants to have another go at me, but he isn't too urgent. He wants to think about his mistakes first. This is why I respect the man. Yeah, that is indeed very uh, wise and respectable. April 84, another change in staff. In place of the departed Boris Snyder, we got two new scientists, Terentev and Vavilov, fairly young. We'll see how they cope with the research. I liked, uh, I liked Terentev from the start. He's energetic and he knows his place in life. Uh, then uh, June 84, met another rookie in our team today, Vavilov, a young man, fairly reserved if not shy, also seemed to, my, to me kind of sentimental. He also enjoys chess and would like to play sometime. I like that. I want to know his play style. June 84, I have a vacation but I'd rather not go home. A resort is also out of the question. The only idea I found worthwhile for my free time is to pursue my small passion. I am a folklorist at heart, so I decided to drive around local villages asking about local legends. Some folks around here remember legends and songs of old that are still unheard of by most folklore students. I am so interested in finding out uh, how folk stories were conceived, what pushed the ancient people to create a certain myth, where are its roots. Solving such problems is like being a real detective. I also learned that I will be followed. Wherever I go, people from the Secret Service will shadow me my every move. Well, I'm not offended by that, it's safer that way. I think this guy is really intelligent and very sympathetic. Yeah, lots of interest. And at the same time, like, 
most likely not a psychopath or anything yeah but he seems to be empathetic as well let's see what happens with him june 84 rich man drone written from the words of an old man living in the duplianske duplianskoye village named gregory korova once there was this lonely farmer that lived over yonder where there there's now a clearing his sure name was trofimov methinks but we called him drone you know like the lazy bee that only buzzes around with no work done now he was one lazy son of a bitch but how rich he was had no servants almost no relatives but still he prospered it was like his farm was running itself somehow people from our village avoided the man my grandma used to say that each night a certain gate opens on drones field and devils pour out holding pitchforks plows and shovels you know to work drones fields I don't know if that was the truth, but when the revolution of 1917 happened and the communists came to take his riches, he gave them everything without a fight, all of his crops, all of his livestock. And when the revolutionaries started to leave, he told them, take it all, I've got fertile land, I will grow more riches for myself. And you know what, comrade, I swear this is the truth, I saw it myself and others saw it too. We all saw how during the next night rich man drones field changed, oh yes. We saw it, saw cows and goats and horses emerge from the ground. First their heads grew from the ground, then the bodies followed, pale and milky, like they were still undeveloped somehow. They crawled out of the ground, screaming, foaming at their mouths, watching each other with wild mad eyes. They grew out of rich man drones field like horseradish or potatoes. It was like the field birthed them. The next morning rich man drone and his new herds were gone without a trace. There are things on this earth much older than humanity, and they like one thing, my friend, solitude. This is why rich man drone left his lands, I think, because we humans bothered him too much. Oh, and the livestock that the communists took from his farm, all of it died out soon. Horses, cows, pigs and goats all fell apart and turned into moist soil, like the soil of drone's field from which they came. So let's remember page 16. There's a rat coming up. Oh no, it's just on the behind the door here, sorry. Sixteen. July 84 in the Konoplia Sovo village, there's a legend that somewhere deep in the woods there's a tree that is not really a tree. It was really hard to understand what uh, that pr phrasing means. The only answer the locals gave me was you'll know it when you see it. One later added that if I manage to find this tree that is not a tree, I should bow to it. If the tree will continue standing still after that, you walk away, boy. But if it bows back, there won't be no place for, uh, to go no more, he said. Interesting. I wonder if we could stumble upon said tree, huh? So, September 84. Nikov, Niki Forov from the control center visited us today. We had a talk. Later even drank together. Secretly, of course, we discussed the latest game in the World Chess Championship between the current champion Karpov and the new star on the scene named Kasparov. The ma that name we know, right? Everybody knows that name. The match is still going, but Nikiforov already thinks that Karpov will win. I, on the other hand, doubt it. I think Kasparov can still give a good fight. Yes, the Sil Sicilian defense and a beautiful victory in 31 moves already happened. But I think the man is still just warming up. Hmm. So the guy really knows about chess and can uh, put people in the right place uh, in his mind. So then, uh, November 84, visited Dr. Broad today to get some medicine against my headache. I do get those sometimes, but this one I have right now is just something else. If all, it almost stings the skin on my head. Broad made a quick checkup and gave me a pill. I think I feel better, but why did it hurt like that? I sleep well, I eat healthy, maybe it's cabin fever. Notice that Nina Semyonovna and her team also look pale and sickly. Uh oh. So, February 85. I'm so lucky that I never took a wife and have no kids. It's frightening to look at how some of my colleagues miss home. March 85, Nik Nikiforov visited today, he had a bottle of something special with him this time. We drank a little bit, talked about Karpov versus Kasparov, 
the famous chess match. I still believe that Compa Campomanes made the right move, but Nikiforov thinks he chickened out. After the talk, Nikiforov told me about a project called Atom. You heard that it's a code name for a contingency plan that will be enforced in case of an all-out war. A creepy rumor. It means they are seriously preparing for war, but does the public know? I don't think so. After that talk, we mostly stayed silent. Finally, Nikiforov shook my hand and went back. I am somewhat unnerved. April 85. A bizarre and terrible fight broke off between Vavilov and me today. I can't even remember what started it, but we were almost at each other's throats moments later. We are lucky that the others pulled us apart and made us make peace. At the end of the day, we even decided we will play chess together as was planned. It's interesting to point out that the flash of rage was instantaneous and completely irrational for, for us both. We both can usually keep our emotions in check and our hands to ourselves. What has gone wrong? I think I should look into the behavior of my other colleagues. Oh, we can see the something beginning, right? Headaches, sudden emotional uh, instability in something and loss of control. And especially this guy here who wrote this. So he's certainly a very rational being. Um, and I doubt that someone like that would just uh, start a fight like that with someone but well July 85 Dr. Broad told me that a fair few of our research members came to him with violent headaches mostly men from Nina Semyonovna's team Colonel Malyshev and some soldiers also reported pains in the head region October 85 just now I awoke from a terrible nightmare as I woke up Quite terrified, a strange thought occurred to me. This is why I'm making this entry. It was not the first time I got that exact nightmare. I had a few of them, differing only slightly between themselves, starting from March. I will now describe the nightmare. I sit inside of my room in the bunker, on a bed, I think, although it doesn't matter. There's light in the room. The light bulb is shining quite brightly. I'm reading a newspaper or something like that, and when the door to the restroom suddenly starts opening uh, what I'm reading a newspaper or something like that when the door to the restroom suddenly starts opening slowly I turn my head and ask Semyonov it's dark in the restroom as nobody answers me I get up from the bed and go to check why the door has opened at this moment I hear a voice from the darkness it says a word or a phrase it's in Russian I think but I can't understand it I ask again is it you, Semyonov? And then I, a thought occurs to me. It is not a human voice. It is not a human. I woke up in tears. Have to pay attention to my dreams from now on. Well, November 85. My dreams are getting more vivid. In my last, I saw my first teacher, Maria Ivanovna. She was wearing some sort of a cotton vest covered with rusty red velvet spots. She was walking around the classroom giving me a lecture when I suddenly had that thought again her voice is not human she is not a human I awoke overwhelmed with terror so something is going on with this brain chemistry of course or, or probably most likely then February 86 had a chat with Vavilov learned something bizarre he gets nightmares that are very close to my own the only difference is that in his dreams he's in Leningrad his favorite city Dr. Broad supposes it's because of the stress. Strange. I don't feel very stressed. Maybe some type of hidden neurosis. So this guy is also very self-aware. And we can uh, fear for the worst, right? Then, May 86. They finally told us the news. While well, we sat underground, our planet died. Why am I not surprised? Strange. Dr. Broad gave everyone sedatives, but I didn't take any. I feel pity for my colleagues and their families. But I don't really give a fuck about everyone else. June 86. Today, a group of soldiers is planning to go to the surface. We need food and resources. A lot of things, really. We also should find survivors and help them in any way we can. Probably. This is all too surreal. Then in 87, we don't have a lot of options. Colonel Malyshev, me, Semyonov, Martinenko, Neyman, as well as Drill Sergeant Denisov and the privates Krasilnikov, Hatshatrian, Chaikin, Samoilov, Kazanov, Chernyavsky and Sverklov are going topside. The others were hit by the news too badly. 
Krasnov went off his rocker, I believe. Good luck to us, I guess. Hope to write a new entry soon. Krasnov could be the guy, I don't remember the names, uh, but could be the guy that was that they put into the maintenance room where we found the body, right? So, now we know what went on. Government not speaking with the people. Um, so, oh yeah, well, so let's try out. We got the info, eight, Nine zero four. Ah, oh, yeah. That person liked music. I actually, I doubt that these synthesizer uh, sounds come out of that. That one, but oh, ah, yeah. Oh, let's let's keep that one on for the moment. That's the next one, okay? So maybe it's seven zero seven zero three and seven. Oh, ah, yeah, very good. So it's actually in order. And the guy had his volume quite loud, huh? that uh, that it can be heard uh, in the next room like this. Okay, if anybody wants to help out with this text song, like with the lyrics, please feel welcome to explain it to the community in the comment section. I guess some form of favorite song, huh? Or popular song. I think we can switch it off, but uh, at least here on my system, that was actually pretty nice. Like uh, going around, you could hear it like from the left and the right speaker. Come on, little rat. 
There you go. There you go. Oh, that's <clears throat> there's nothing here. No. Well then, we don't have time to play billiard or snooker. Mimic. We're just uh, we are we are looking into these rooms here. Because we have the codes before I forget them. Uh, and then, unfortunately, we have to end this episode. It's gone on for quite a while now. Oh, yeah, so there is someone here. Is that a disc? But we can't intake there. So there is a body. Oh! And. We remember the irrational fear of beheading someone, right? So this guy probably was beheaded by the door. This nightmare came true. Poor guy. Ten rubles. Is it a dog? Yeah, I think so. I guess this refers to some... ...some stuff. And the Soviet Union. You don't hear anything. Oh yeah. So and then this might be eight two one zero. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. So the guy had just these. That is certainly darker music.
Oh wow, we have uh, more incoming there. Well, okay, the, so the music is rather dramatic and I don't, uh, it's not a surprise for me personally that uh, these guys killed themselves. Oh wow, nice. Oh. laundry room okay well so listen to the song and then, then we'll check out this one here and then we end this episode there's one more red there yes come to papa sit it in the eye 60 oh yeah what do we have here Nothing. Why is everything empty? Meldonium. This is a limited market pharmaceutical developed in the 1970s by Eva Calvins at the USSR Latvia Institute of Organic Synthesis. The drug expands the arteries, increasing blood flow and the distribution of oxygen throughout your uh, vital systems, plus to endurance. However, that can have severe side effects, actually. Some rubles and more cables. Yeah, so someone has been here, evidently. So, and I think this is where we can end this episode. Um, we will continue next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we heard some dramatic music certainly fitting for the end times and um, yeah well we we actually smashed and slashed a couple of critters this is actually a pretty nice oh there's another spoon here uh, this is actually a rather nice uh, common area yeah for psychological reasons they have some trees on the wall painted Okay then, so, uh, let's continue next time. Thanks for watching, let's continue. Please don't sh uh, don't hesitate to share your thoughts and any knowledge maybe on the songs, the references there uh, in the comment section. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Um, yeah, and then again, I would also be, uh, be happy if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, so you never ever miss an episode again. So next time, bye-bye.